Good morning, I'm Mr. Priscilla with my Math 1314 class, and today we're going to discuss ellipses and hyperbolas. We discussed circles in the last uh, homework assignment, so an ellipse is nothing more than an elongated circle. We could think of it as an oval. And just like with a circle, an ellipse is going to have a center, and we're going to denote that center with the ordered pair. Do y'all remember the letters I used for the center of a circle? What did I use? H and K. Yes, that's right. I used an H and a K. So that's what I'm going to use for the center of my ellipse, H and K. But with the circle, the distance from the center to the outer edge was the same in all directions. With an ellipse, that left-right distance is certainly not the same as that up and down distance. If it were all the same, it would be a circle, not an uh, ellipse. Notice the left-right distance is different from the vertical distance. The other possibility for an ellipse, you could have it more vertical. It could be something like that. You'd still have a center. And notice the horizontal distance is not the same as the vertical distance. Some terminology. The major axis of an ellipse is the longest line segment that passes through the center. So in this case, the longest line segment is that horizontal line segment. So there's the major axis. In uh, the case of the second ellipse I drew, the longest line segment is the vertical line segment, so there's the major axis. Hmm. Applying that uh, same type of uh, terminology to the shortest line segment, what do you think we're going to call those shortest line segments? Minor axis? Yeah, I agree. That's going to be the minor axis. Minor axis. The minor axis is the shortest line segment. There and there. And we're going to take an algebraic approach to uh, this discussion on ellipses, which means we're going to represent these ellipses using equations. Uh, with circles, we had center radius form for the equation of a uh, circle. Here we have, I guess, it's just standard form for an ellipse. Okay, let me move it up. Standard form for an ellipse is very similar to uh, the center radius form of a circle. You have an x minus h quantity squared. You have a y minus k quantity squared. But with the circle, on the right hand side you have an equals r squared. Well, that's not what we're going to have here. It's going to equal 1. And these terms over here are going to be fractions. The first one we'll put over an a squared. The second one over a b square. <coughs> Excuse me. The way that uh, I'm using that a square and b square for the denominator, that's saying that those denominators have to be positive. You're taking a number, any real number except for zero, and squaring it, so that denominator is going to have to be a positive number. That's one of the advantages of writing it as a, the denominators of, as a square and b square. That's saying the denominators must be positive. Something else. These fractions are being added. That's important because when we see uh, hyperbolas in a few minutes, the only difference in the equation is instead of having a plus sign there, we're going to have a minus sign. And uh, let's see. I think we'll go ahead. We've already said that the center is going to be denoted with the ordered pair HK. We said that the left right movement and the up down movement would not be the same when you're drawing the graph. I may as well mention this right now. To determine your left right movement, 
to determine the left-right movement. Which axis runs left-right? The x-axis. You go to the x-fraction. You take the square root of the x denominator. So you take the square root of the number under x. For the vertical movement, for the vertical movement, uh, up and down, that's the y-axis, you take the square root of the number under y, the square root of the y denominator. And with that in mind, I'm ready to do an example. This is number one. This is number. This is like the number one in your homework. As I said, I printed out all the homework, the homework assignment before class, and so this is number one. And the graphing is just multiple choice. I'm just going to hide the uh, four options. So let me make sure what I'm going to do is make sure that the problem I've written down here before class is the same as the problem that's on this little sheet of paper. X squared over 16 plus Y squared over 9 equals 1. Yes, that's correct. And that's a 9. Hmm. In order to graph this, notice the fractions are being added. The fractions are being added. It's set equal to 1. That little plus sign there is what's telling me that we're looking at an ellipse. What's the center? This happened with circles. Nothing's added to or subtracted from that x and y. So what do we assume the center was in that event? Zero, zero. So nothing's being subtracted from x. Nothing's being subtracted from y. So the center is it zero zero? Let's determine our left uh, left right movement and our up and down movement. Left right. You take the square root of left right. That's the x axis. You take the square root of the x denominator. The square root of sixteen is four. So we're going to move left right four units. What about up and down? Our up and down movement. Is that orange showing? Mm, okay, up and down. That's the y-axis. You take the square root of the y denominator. So we're going to move up and down three units. We're going to move left, right four units. And suppose that had been a seven instead of a nine. Well, then you'd have, what, a two-point something. The square root of seven is a two-point something. You'd get sort of a decimal approximation and uh, <coughs> just sort of eyeball it. I think my math lab always generates perfect square denominators, but they don't have to be. If that had been a 17, we'd have, what, a 4.2. So it doesn't have to be a perfect square. I have some graph paper I can use, but I think instead, since most of y'all aren't using graph paper, you're doing it on notebook paper. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw my little XY grid. There. And I'll put my little tick marks. One, two, The center is at the origin. So there's my center. I'll just put a little dot there. That's saying that's where I'm going to start counting. We have to go four units to the right. So four units to the right of the center. One, two, three, four. We go four units to the left. One, two, three, four. How many units are we supposed to go up? Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Those four dots are referred to as the vertices of the ellipse. But those four dots, we can draw in our oval shaped figure.
There's my graph. Any questions? These, this one's nice because we're starting at the origin. In a moment, we'll be starting somewhere way off up here, and then we'll have to count left, right, up, and down from the new center. But for the first one, we're at the origin. And in some of the problems they'll be asking us, once we've drawn the graph, realize there's 3 and negative 3, there's 4 and negative 4. They'll be asking us to explicitly state the center, the domain, and the range. The center we know, that's zero, zero. The domain is the set of all numbers that are used as x-coordinates on this graph. What numbers are used as x-coordinates? I'll make a note here that this is the set of numbers that represent the x-coordinates. We'll be seeing more with domains and ranges the next time. Oh, let me push that up. Oh, wrong. Okay. Imagine taking this blue oval shape and reflecting it down onto the x-axis. What numbers would be covered up by that blue oval shape on the x-axis? Is there a point on this blue oval shape that has an x-coordinate of 5? Here's 5. Is 5 in the domain? No, there's no number. What's the smallest number in the domain? I think there's a smaller one. A lot of smaller ones. Negative 4 is the smallest number in the domain. What's the biggest number in the domain? Positive 4. And then every number, if you took those blue curves and reflected them onto the x-axis, it would cover from negative 4 to positive 4. So we're going to say that the domain is the closed interval from negative 4 to positive 4. And notice those are brackets around the negative 4 and positive 4. The range is the set of all numbers that are used as y coordinates on the graph. So I'll make a note here that the range is the set of all y coordinates. Which numbers are used as y coordinates? Is 10 used as a y coordinate. 10 would be somewhere way up here, okay? 10 would be way up there. Is 10 used as a y coordinate? No, what's the biggest y coordinate on that graph? Three. Three, what's the smallest y coordinate on the graph? Three. So I'll say that the range is the closed interval from negative three to positive three. But on number one, all they're asking us to do is to draw the graph and then pick the correct response. So here's the problem. They want us to pick the correct graph. Let's see. Can y'all see that? It's pretty small. A, B, C, or D. I think only one of them. Oh, be careful. I think they're incrementing in units of four here. Look at that. 20? I don't think so. I think that's what I'm saying. Be careful. I think it's B. 2, 4, and then 2, 4. Watch those increments. That 20 and negative 20. This one here, they're incrementing in units of 2, so it's response B. Remember for a, a multiple choice question with uh, four options, uh, four uh, possible options on my math lab, you get two shots at choosing the correct response. So if you chose that one incorrectly, you could still correct it and choose B. Okay? Let's go on to another one. This is number three. Let me make sure that... Mm -hmm. Make sure I didn't miscopy the problem. Okay. Graph, identify the domain range center x minus 2 squared over 9 plus y plus 5 squared over 25 equals 1. Yeah, that's it. So here's the uh, ellipse they want us to graph. Remember, standard form for the equation of an ellipse has those minus signs there after the x and the y. 
So what you see inside those parentheses is exactly the opposite of the coordinates of the center. You see a negative h and a negative k, the center is actually h and k. So with that in mind, you apply that same logic to this ellipse. Notice it's in standard form. The fractions are being added, set equal to 1. So we can state the center. What's the center? 2, negative 5. I agree. Change signs, change signs. That y plus 5 is like a y minus negative 5. So the signs you see inside the parentheses are exactly the opposite of the coordinates of the center, just not with that circle homework that y'all uh, did before this one. Left-right movement from the center. Left-right movement. You take the square root of what number? The 9, I agree. It's the number under the x fraction. Addition is commutative, so they may have the y in front of the uh, plus sign. <coughs> so always look and see. Where's the x? You take the square root of that number under x. So we're going to go left, right, three units. What about up and down? Okay, up and down. You take the square root of the y denominator for 5. All you need is that center, the left-right movement, and the up-and-down movement in order to get a, a graph drawn. So let me move my paper and there. I'm going to, I'll draw my XY grid. So this let me let me put my little tick marks. Hopefully that's good enough. Okay. So the center is at the point two negative five. There's my center. When the center is moved away from the origin, we refer to this as a translation. We have translated the location that we're going to be counting from, from the origin, to this new, new point, 2, negative 5. So we've translated, for, uh, for our purposes, it's as if this center is the new origin. We have to count 3 units right, 3 units left. We're going to have to count 5 units up and 5 units down. So here goes. We're positioned at two negative, uh, two negative five. We're going to go three units to the right. So we're at two. We're going three units to the right. That's going to drop us off right there. So what would the coordinates of that point be? It'd be a positive five, comma negative five. Yes, I agree. That's a two, and that's a five. Now we're going three units to the left. One, two, right there. So that would be the point negative one, negative five. Notice how I'm labeling these numbers on the uh, uh, x-axis. In a moment I'll ne label the important numbers on the y-axis because those numbers are going to be important for determining the domain and range. Then we have to go five units up. We're going five units up. Oh, that's nice. Where is that going to drop us? One, two, three, four, five. That's dropping us on the x-axis there at two. And five units down. One, two, three, four, five. We labeled the center. We moved left, right, three units. We moved up and down five units to give us the four vertices, those red dots that I have there. Those are my vertices. We went three units right, three to the left, five up, five down. And let's see, that's, this number here 
that point is obviously at zero on the y-axis. What's this uh, y value? Negative 10. negative 10. Okay, we were at negative 5. We went 5 more down. Drawing your oval shape figure. Oh, well. Uh, well, I'm not doing a very good job with my oval shape figure. Oops. There. Should have used a pencil there. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the graph? Okay, they specifically ask us to state the center, the domain, and the range. So I'll write that right here. Center, domain, and range. What did we say the center was? Okay, you're going to have to write that as an ordered pair, so 2, negative 5. The domain. Take that red graph and reflect it onto the x-axis. Is negative 3 going to be used as an x value? And so what's the smallest x value used? negative one what's the biggest x value that's going to be used five and then everything between there so i'll say the closed interval from negative one to five the range is what uh, is one being used as an uh, y value no what's the biggest y value on that graph Zero, I agree. Zero is the biggest y value. That's the, uh, the top point. What's the smallest y value? Negative 10. So and then every number between there. Imagine taking that red graph and reflecting it onto the y-axis. It would cover up from zero to negative 10. How do we say that using interval notation? Call it out as if you were typing it in my math lab. Bracket. Bracket. Keep going. I think it better go small to big. I think it better go negative 10, comma, not 2, 0. Okay, be careful. The y coordinate at this point is 0. And let me see. Here the problem is on my math lab. Okay, so... What was the domain? The domain was, let's see, negative 1 to 5, so we'd choose that one. Then they would ask, what's the range? The range was, where's the range? Negative 10 to 0, negative 10 to 0. Can you all see this right there? Is that still on the display? Yeah, okay. And the center, we've already said the center was 2, negative 5. So here you'd have to type 2, comma, negative 5. And now they want us to choose the graph. So there's our graph. Which one would we choose, A, B, C, or D? In this case, I think there's only uh, one that's coming close. I think there's only one that has the correct center and the correct movement left, right, up, and down. It looks like D. All the scales are the same, 10, 10, so D. Any questions there? And now, hyperbolas. A hyperbola consists of two U-shaped uh, curves that could be opening left, right, one opening left, the other one opening to the right, or they could be opening one going up, one going down. I said that the equation for hyperbola looks very similar to the equation for an ellipse, except the fractions are being subtracted. 
if the x variable is the variable that's in front of the minus sign. If your equation is in the form x minus h quantity squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1, if the x is in front of the minus sign, you expect to have two u shapes, one opening on the left, one opening on the right. If, now remember addition is commutative, so with the ellipses you could always put the x in front of that plus sign. Subtraction isn't. A minus B doesn't usually equal B minus A. So if your equation has the Y variable in front of that connecting subtraction sign, Y minus K quantity squared over B squared minus X minus H quantity squared over A squared equals 1. If your Y is in front of that connecting minus sign, then you expect to have one curve opening upward, one opening downward. If the X is in front of the minus sign, the X fraction is what's first, you expect to have one curve opening to the right and one uh, curve opening to the left. A hyperbola has two vertices. With, it, uh, with this situation, the graph is going down, then it starts to go up. So that top U has a vertex, it's going up and then it's going down. The bottom U has a vertex. Here, the left curve has a vertex, it's falling to the left, then it changes and starts falling to the right. I should say it's falling to the from left to right and then right to left, vice versa for the other one. To determine the center, it's the same way we did for the uh, ellipse. The center will be HK. And just like with an ellipse, we have to find left right uh, movement and up and down movement. Left right. We'll take the square root of that x denominator, the number under x, and for up and down, that's the y-axis, so you take the square root of the number under y, the y denominator. That's just like with an ellipse. I think I'm ready to do an example. This is number two. Number two in your homework. Let me make sure I didn't miss copy. Number two. Mm, let's see, where is it? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, y square over nine minus x squared over 16 is equal to 1. Yes, that's right. And for the hyperbolas, they're not going to be asking you for the domain and range. They're just asking you to draw the graph and then graph it on paper and then choose the correct graph. Uh, it's a multiple choice option. There's not a graphing tool for ellipses or hyperbolas. So, I noticed something that the y is in front of the minus sign. I noticed that the y is in front of the minus sign. So, with the y in front of the minus sign on this, that says I'm going to have one u opening up, one u opening down. I think I'm going to make a note of that right now. I'm going to have one up and one down. That will become significant in a moment. What's the center? Okay, nothing subtracted from X, nothing subtracted from Y. What's my left-right movement? Left-right, that's the X-axis. Good, you didn't just go to the first denominator. It's the left-right movement, that's the X-axis. Uh, you take the square root of the X denominator, and the square root of 16, I agree, is 4. What about my vertical movement? 
vertical, that's the y-axis, that's when you take the square root of the y denominator to give me 3. And okay, I'm drawing my let me draw my xy grid there. Oh, this is nice. It's centered at the origin. And let me put my little tick mark. So we're centered at the origin. We go four units to the right. One, two, three, four. We got four units to the left. One, two, three, four. We go three units up. One, two, three. And three units down. And if this were an uh, ellipse, what would we do now? Let me draw in the little. Uh, oval shaped figure okay so if you want to call it a circle Larissa that's fine but technically it's an oval so oh, but it's not the fractions were being subtracted so it's not an ellipse it's a hyperbola what we're going to do is we're uh, going to use some tools uh, the primary tool is called the fundamental rectangle that'll help us decide how wide these u-shaped figures have to be so the fundamental rectangle is the rectangle you get when you draw uh, vertical line segments passing through the left right points horizontal line segments through the top and bottom points so these points that are on the fundamental rectangle are not points that satisfy the equation if I chose this point here right here that's on the fundamental rectangle 2 negative 3 if I plugged in 2 for X and negative 3 for Y the left side would not equal the right side so the points on that rectangle are not necessarily points on the graph so that's why I'm making this rectangle dotted I don't think my math lab even shows the rectangle um, since the points aren't even on the points on the rectangle are not points that satisfy the equation they don't even show it I'm going to make the rectangle I'm not going to try to erase it I'm just going to make it dotted uh, hyperbola uh, the graph of a hyperbola has something called slant or oblique asymptotes a slant asymptote the, the slant asymptote that we're looking for is created by drawing in the diagonals the points on these asymptotes are not points on the line, I mean on the hyperbola, so I'm making this big X with dotted lines as well. Unfortunately, my math lab, sometimes they don't show the uh, asymptotes, other times they show it, uh, show them, and they make them solid marks. That's unfortunate, but I'm not going to make them solid because the points on the asymptote do not satisfy the equation. Those, that big X just says how wide we're going to make our U-shaped figures. And now we're ready to actually draw in the U-shaped curve. Curves, I should say. Remember we said since Y was in front of the minus sign, you'd have one U opening up, one U opening down. So we're going to have, there are my two vertices. I expect to have one vertex on top, one vertex on bottom. Which points did you get when you moved the square root of 9 units? That Y is what's in front. Those were the up and down points. That's this point here. Here's the first vertex. It's a U-shaped figure opening upward. The graph gets extremely close to the asymptote but it doesn't pass through it if that graph if we kept on drawing the graph eventually it looked like this red curve is just sitting on that dotted slanted line but technically there's always a little gap between that red curve and the asymptote here's my second vertex it's opening downward <coughs> there to there 
the y was in front of the minus sign the y was in front of the minus sign what which points did you get when you move the square root of nine units you got the up and down points so the up and down points were the vertices there's the first vertex there's the second vertex <coughs> Any questions on the graph? Now number two, here's number two. They want us to choose the correct graph. That's all they're asking us for. A, B, C, or D. I think we can clearly say it's not B or D. I think we can discard C. C's opening the wrong way. I could have picked out this graph just by knowing that it was going to have one curve going up and one curve going down. There's only one option that has one U going up, one U going down. That looks like response A. Can y'all see those? There it is. Notice they're not showing the fundamental rectangle and they're not showing the asymptote. Sometimes they do show the big X and when they do, they make it solid. I dislike that, but nothing we can do about it. Any questions? The only points that satisfy that equation are the red points that are on the red curve. All those dots, those dotted lines, those other two points that we used to get the fundamental rectangle, they do not satisfy the equation for the hyperbola. Any questions? Okay, let's do another one. This is number seven. Okay. Well, let me make sure I didn't miss copy number seven. Let's see. Hmm. X plus three quantity squared over four minus y plus 2 quantity squared over 16 equals 1. Yeah, that's it. Notice the fractions are being subtracted. That says that the graph is going to be a hyperbola. It's in standard form. We have the fraction minus the fraction equals 1. Since it's in standard form, you can tell me the center. What's the center? Okay, negative 3, negative 2, I agree. Left right movement from my center. Left right movement from the center. Left right. I'm going to take the square root of what number? 4, left right. Left, right, that's the x-axis. You take the square root of the x denominator, so I agree. My left, right movement is 2. What about my up and down movement? And that's the y-axis. The square root of the y denominator is 4. I'll draw my x-y grid. So we locate our center at the point negative 3, negative, oh, negative 3, negative 2. I'm going to have to move over some more there, aren't I? Okay. Negative 3, negative 2. There's my center. I said that the center was at negative 3, negative 2. Left, right, we're moving 2. And up and down, we're moving 4. So left, right, we're going to move two. One, two. One, two. Now we're going to go four up and four down. One, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four. We located the center at negative three, negative two. We went two units to the right, two units to the left. We went four units up, four units down. And if this were an ellipse, we would connect those dots with an oval to the best of our ability, but it's a hyperbola. So I'm going to draw in my fundamental rectangle. Okay. Then I draw in my asymptotes. Draw in my asymptotes. And now, which points are my vertices? Which points are the vertices? I didn't even make a note of that. What fraction, which variable is in front of the minus sign? And x, which points did we get when we move the square root of four units? The left right points, so the left right points are going to be the vertices. We go left, hmm, where's my purple pen? There it is. We went left two, so here's the first vertex. Going like that and down. Here's the second one going up and down. Any questions there? The equation, the equation had the x in front of the minus sign. The x was in front of that minus sign. So when I saw that X in front of the minus sign, I knew it was going to be like that. So let's look and see. Here's the problem. Which one would I use? This? Oh, I better move it down for y'all. Let's see. Mm, and they're showing the X's. They're showing the big X. That really messes up the picture. But I think we can clearly say that it's not A or B. A and B both have the curve centered where? At zero, zero, that's certainly not where the curve should be centered. So if you look at D, they have a big X and they have one going up. One's going up. The other one's going down. Is that what we want? No. And because I'm recording, I can't zoom these for you, by the way. Oh, I guess I can. Hold on. There, okay. I think it's a response C. Do y'all see that? It's hard to tell, but that's what they're trying to do. Show response C. One curve opening to the left, one curve opening to the right, and the center is somewhere right there, which is in the third quadrant. Any questions there? We'll do number five now, and then, if we have time, we'll go back to number seven. This is number five. Yes, okay. Whether this is an ellipse or a hyperbola, I think we'll agree that this is not in standard form. Standard form for an ellipse or a hyperbola. What number has to be over here? One, here's the trick. If you don't have a one over here, divide through each term by whatever number you do have. Whatever that number is there, you need it to be a one, divide by that number. So you have four divided by four, that's a one. And 
This first one, the fours cancel, but I'm going to write it. I want it written as a fraction, so I'm going to write it as y squared over 1 minus an x squared over 4. Once we do that, it falls out very quickly. That is a 4 divided by 4. That is a 1. The tail of that y is getting it messing up my 1. But that's a 1 there. This reminds me of that number 2 that we did. What's the center? 0, 0. Left, right movement from the center. 2. Up and down. I agree. Took the square root of 4 to give you a 2. You took the square root of 1. To give you a 1, and drawing our xy grid, so we're going 2 to the right. 2 to the left. You only go up 1 and down 1. Draw in your rectangle. Draw in the rectangle. And make yourself a big X. Which points are going to be the vertices? The left-right points or the up and down points? What do you look at? The up and down because y is in front of the minus sign. Which points did we get? We took the square root of 1. Uh, we got the up and down points. So it's going up and going down. Any questions there? And this was number two. No, this is number five, isn't it? Here it is. Here's number five. Here's number five. And moving up. Which graph looks most, uh, it's hard to tell. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it here. I'm going to do what I did a moment ago. Give me a moment. A, B, C, or D. Which one looks like it? They're not showing the X's. They're not showing the, everything looks like an X, but they're not showing the asymptotes. Those are just the curves. So, A, B, C, or D? B. B? Yeah, I'd agree with the B. This one here, C, looks like it's too narrow, okay? So I think they've reversed the uh, left, right, and the up and down, it looks like. I would go with response B. Any questions there? Okay. And there's another one I wanted to do. Number, no, not that one. Where is it? Ah, here it is. And they want us to find the graph, uh, find the equation of the graph. Here they're giving us the equation, I mean the curve. They want us to go back to the equation. Can y'all tell they've drawn in the x, the, the <coughs> hyperbola, the curve, I'm going through it right now. I'm redoing it. There. And there. The red thing is the curve. The uh, dark blue thing, that big X, those are the asymptotes. Okay, because it's opening up and down, what letter should appear in front of the minus sign? 
Why? So I think we can discard A and B. We can discard A and B, correct? It's opening up and down, so it has to have Y in front of the minus sign. Now, let's see, for our vertical movement, do you all agree it's centered at the origin? That big X is passing through the origin, so it's centered at the origin. So the center is at the origin. My left-right movement, the square root of what? What's the left-right movement? Counting, how many units did they go up uh, and down? Five? So what needs to be under that radical? 25. 25. That means the Y denominator needs to be a 25. The Y denominator needs to be a 25. I think we've got it. Which one is it? D. The only one that could have that curve as its graph is response D. It's centered at 0, 0. Up and down, the square root of 25 is 5. Any questions on our logic there? And we have time to graph another one. How about... Mm -hmm. How about... Do I like that one? Mm -hmm. hmm. I like this one. This is like y'all's number eight. Here's the one we want to graph. Y plus two quantity squared all over nine minus X minus two quantity squared all over 25 is equal to one. Instructions just say to graph. this in standard form? Are we looking at an ellipse or hyperbola? Hyperbola because the fractions are being subtracted. So it's a hyperbola centered where? Negative two, positive, two. no, wait a minute. I think I'll set it backwards. I think I went like that and that. Remember the x coordinate has to go first, so two, negative two. You have to put the x coordinate first so the center is at two, negative two. Left, right movement from the center. Left, right from the center. We're going to take the square root of what number? 25 left, right. That's the x-axis. You take the square root of the x denominator. I agree for five. Up and down. You take the square root of the y denominator, that's 3, I agree. And we'll draw our xy grid. I was always a big writer, even when I was, I mean, using paper. I just wrote big, so my graphs take up a lot of room on the paper. So we locate the center. The center is at the point 2, negative 2. We're going to go 5 to the right and 5 to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We were at 2, we moved 5 over, so now we're at 7 there. Go 5 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We were at 2, 2 minus 5 dropped us off at negative 3. Then we go 3 up. 1, 2, 3. 3 down. 1, 2, 3. And now what do we do? Okay, we draw the little box. Mm. 
and draw in our big X. That'll tell us how wide to make our U-shaped figures. Now we're ready to draw the U-shaped figures. So, hmm, which points are going to be my vertices? Left, right, or up and down? Up and down because Y was in front of that minus sign. So up and down, I agree. Here's the first one going up. Here's the next one going down. And we have to choose the correct graph. A, B, C, or D. Now, here they're showing the X's. I can see the big X they're showing. So, can y'all tell which one? I think we can clearly say that it's not, it's not B. Because B, it looks like it's centered on the Y axis. The center's not on the Y axis. It's not D because D is opening left, right. So we're discarding D. We're discarding B. Looks like C is too narrow. And not only that, look at where it's centered. Isn't the center up there in the second quadrant? I think there's only one that's centered in the correct quadrant. Which one is it? A. A? Yeah, right. And then down. Looks like response A. Of course, when you're doing your homework, you can blow up those little graphs to see it, get a better picture. But let's like response A. A is the only one that's centered correctly. Any questions there? And I'll upload this video for y'all. At this point, there's no videos on the uh, for this assignment, so I'll upload this. And then this will be uh, listed as a class lecture video. So, do you get uh, uh, do you get credit for watching it? No, but.